I tell you, like I said before, if I wasn't doing music, I would be involved in film somehow. I don't, I don't, I don't do doing what? what? I have yeah. no idea, really. Yeah. Uh, maybe historian, maybe I like history oh. and and I like movies, so I don't know, maybe that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's right. Or best big, grip, big film buff. Key grip, best boy, best boy. Best. Yeah, they give me a title, <laughs> best boy, baby. Take it. <laughs> anyway. That that was one of my my original interests too. So it's kind of funny that I'm sitting here with all this equipment. Fill them, as they say in certain parts of the world. Fill them, fill them. Anyway, okay, so this is Slappercast episode number sixty five. And we're sitting here once again at, at uh, Casa de la Hughes. Sure. What do you call it? Uh, I, call this, I call this from the Tiki Hut, but tiki we're not quite, it's not yeah. quite Tiki-fied, but it's got, uh, you know, got my mugs up and stuff like that. But yeah, <laughs> we're here. How are you guys doing? I don't oh, well. talk about it. So far, so good. Beautiful day. Yeah. Can't complain. Feeling good. It's a little, it feels early. It does feel kind of early. early. Yeah. Like early, early in the day? Yeah. Like it's early? Yeah, like 7 a.m. Like the clock's just messed with us. It's like 7 a.m. Yeah. West Coast time. It's reversed. No. Yeah, we're good? Yeah, we're good. Cool. Um, Do we so have any leftover... We don't. <laughs> ...thing from last week? John, John Naney was, was messaging me last night about, about just, just sending me some stuff he thought was cool. John needs to message all of us if he's going to, you know, he just can't pick a favorite. Yeah, but I asked him, you, Carry you, on. you got any questions, maybe? And he's like, no. <laughs> John, Thanks, John. Yeah. yeah. Big help. Yeah. He, said, he said, why doesn't Chad sing more? And he said, just kidding. <laughs> I said, no questions today. Yeah, he's, uh, John, I, I'm, I'm, we were speaking yesterday, to, talking to a friend of mine yesterday about this show, and he had told me that he had watched some episodes, and he had said that he was very, you yeah, know, he was impressed with the, the distance it's common it's, uh, that was nice to hear but he also said that you know if during this this stuff that we're in right now he said that, you know he could call in and, and we we really need to we really need to add that to this i we believe figure out a way to do that yeah yeah, yeah it's just yeah. have them call you know dial in on the computer or whatever and, yeah. and just just have them on you know but john nania is one of the f people that we need to talk to because not only is he a, uh he's He's an encyclopedia when it comes to music, but his tastes are everything that we 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 have and, and beyond. And he, he used to uh, DJ in New York. He used to oh, uh, nice. you know for a, in a college yeah. radio and all that stuff. But he's uh, he, I will mention something on uh, on a phone conversation and within and I kid you not two two days three, three business days tops. A package arrives at the door with LPs and cassette tapes, and yeah. I just got a, a, a bag full of cassette tapes. With <laughs> I just lost my, uh, I just lost. I mean, years ago, I lost my Another Perfect Day Motorhead record, and uh, it, it showed up in cassette, a cassette form. in this bag. And, and I've so you know, I've been, I've been, uh, I have two thousand watts of Motorhead going through my QSCs at the at the house. It's just uh, anyway. So John is uh, he is not just a pistol. But he's he's, he's extremely he's painfully smart and cut this part out too. I don't want him hearing this because he's uh, <laughs> anyway. I find it interesting how like there's like there's a lot of musicians that are into music and they know they know a lot of stuff. It's a lot of non musicians that are just so knowledgeable about genres and the history of it. And it's like it's that's you know their passion is was never to grab an instrument. Their passion was to just listen and learn and. And, and, and take all this information and share it with the rest of us, whether it's a DJ or an audiophile or whatever. But it's amazing how some people and how some people are just like, I never wanted to play. I was just, I just love music. Yeah. I think they love it more than us sometimes. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. You know yeah. what I mean? That kind of vibe, you know? That baffles me too when you have those one hit wonders and those songs of that 70s or 80s or even 60s, or 50s, whatever it is, and they're able to spit these names out mm -hmm. uh, of these bands. And you know who it is. It's, it's back there, but you just, you just, you you've got to go and get it. They have it yeah. available at all moments. That's that's impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, they're, they're, uh, and, they're, and it's uh, nearly as impressive as this coffee. This is fantastic. Yeah, by the way, thank you. It's good, man. Thank you. Thank you. Glad you're enjoying it. Can we turn this light on? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's uh, by, if Patrick wants to get it. It's that switch on the right. Cool. Yeah. It's a, a little dark. A little dark. A little dark. God burns. That helps. It burns. Okay, cool. 
Thank you. Oof. Now I'm awake. Now we've lost all the viewers. <laughs> now we've lost yeah. it. Oh, that's what they look like. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm up with. They had such handsome, sexy voices. I don't know what happened. Uh, so we didn't talk about this on the show yet, uh, yet but you've been doing some interviews for uh, Progressive Arts Society online. Yeah. Well, just one so far. I just mean, well, one, yeah. I, sh I shouldn't say that. Um, I've done a bunch. Yeah, uh, I've done about between Progressive Arts Society and NAM. I've done probably eighty five, ninety interviews with people. Is this about usually, a while ago? Yeah, yeah. but they're usually on a website. Do what? Is this on a website? Is all this? Uh, yeah, I meant. Did I send you links to that last time? Yeah, I, I shared it on Facebook. Okay, cool, actually, cool. Yeah. So there's some there's some links to them on 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 the NAM site. We're still. It's been 10 years now. We're still trying to figure out what to do with them for the Progressive Arts Society. Early side. days. Like, like, yeah. like, yeah, can we, like, house them? Do you have enough bandwidth? Because they're huge. I mean, they're, they're giant chunks of, you know, uh, information. So, um, uh, like I said, when I joined the committee years ago, the one thing that I saw on the list of, like, duties that you could do was oral history. And I thought, ooh, oral history. <laughs> That was interesting. Can we turn the light off again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and, uh, and, and, and so I kind of asked a couple of folks that had done it before and they were like, the easiest way to do it is just get a decent camera, like a video camera, and then, um, just start asking questions and shut up when, when they, when they, uh, when people talk. And that's actually some of the best advice I've ever gotten because I see a lot of people that do interviews or they think they do interviews and they just, um, like, um, They'll say, yep, uh-huh, mm. mm hmm oh, like, throughout the entire, like, the person's talking, and they'll just jump in and just go, mm, oh, yeah, like, if it interests them, and I just do this, nod, because they're telling a narrative, they're telling yeah. their story, and then if I have something, you know, to, to add, I'll wait till they're done talking, and I'll say, you know, it's really interesting you said that, because, mm -hmm. you know, and try to interject something that sounds semi-intelligent. Like when I did that one with Aaron Spears a couple of weeks ago, I met him a couple of years ago at, uh, at one of the conventions and he was just the sweetest guy. And so when it, when it came up, the PAS was like, do you want to do this interview? I'm like, yeah, because he's a great guy and he's interesting and I'm sure he'll have a lot to talk about stuff. So, and sure enough, in that interview, I just sat in that chair with Chad and, was just, and on the internet, just like, mm-hmm. He's talking, 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 yeah. talking. Yeah, that was great, you know, <laughs> and you know, well, if, and if you're interviewing a, a personality and you're interviewing somebody that's in, in, a, in, a, you know, in the public eye, chances are that they've, they've got a story of two to tell. Sure. Well, yeah. And if you, if you go into the interview as the star, you know, you, you believe that you're the, you know, then you, you're in the wrong business. Yeah. There's so many where I watch when you said, when you, I, I thought it was going in a different direction, but it's, it's, it's the same result where the interviewer just becomes the... That my, and my favorite of all time, it just, just, I, I, I think, I, I don't think there'll ever be another, but I think my, my personal favorite was Dave Letterman in, in the, that you had to, he wasn't, he, he, although he was the biggest star ever on TV in, in my, in my eyes, he never, he, he, he let you, gave you all the rope to do with whatever you needed to mm -hmm, do. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't bring it, if you didn't bring the thing, it was, it was over. Yeah. I mean, you're gone. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the, 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 the get, shepherd's hook. You just yeah, drag it. the in, hook. Yeah. <laughs> and you're done. Yeah. But when, when you have somebody like that with so much, such great timing, great comedic timing, but such a, a knowledge, you know, it, it, it cracked me up too, that, that he would call himself a dumb guy, which he's <laughs> the, the smartest man on TV, mm -hmm. smartest man you'll probably run across. But when you have that, that, that's a different type of, but I mean, you, I, I know what you're saying too with your, when you're interviewing somebody, you're trying to extract the information and shed, a, you know, shed light on these topics that you're interested in as well. And it's also going to benefit the, the, you know, the, the precursor art society sure. in, in this. Or in anybody this, just who yeah, wants to, wants to listen that to, to that, that, to might, to that might know who that person is and wants to learn a little bit more about yeah. it. You know, and there's so many, there's so many different avenues that people can go to for interviews. I mean, there's magazine, I mean, I guess magazines are still a thing. You know, there's, you know, there's online interviews and stuff like that. And, you know, people ask, um, different things, you know, and I'm really being, being a fan of history. I'm really more concerned at like 
where'd you grow up? Who, you know, what was your family musical? How did you get started playing drums? How did you get from point A to point B? Is there anything you can tell us about your career that will help other people's careers? You know, that might be listening, especially younger kids that might want to get into the music business. Don't do it. Um, kidding, of course. <laughs> um, not. But um, you know, so that's 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 my my, that's my my interest is in that. You know, finding out you know the the, the roots and, and and whatnot. So yeah, so Aaron was fun. It might be um, there's, there might be some more down the pike, uh, depending on how long this whole thing lasts. And I mean, you know, I know enough people that I can just call them and say, hey, do you want to do this interview? And they'd be like, yeah, well, let's get on get on the horn and do it. So and uh, there's a couple people that are doing it now online, and it's not great but it's just one way for them to you know remain relevant i guess you know um there's like there's a couple people that are just terrible at it and i'm not going to name names drumio come on um drumio gab but um um it's just like this and i've I've called them out on like i'm like this is not how you interview people you know this but whatever it's fine or they they make some some mistakes you were well they're just like yeah they're just you know yeah. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's cool. I remember when I did that. You know. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that, that's where I thought you were initially because when you start dragging yourself, they, then you just need to sit at home in front of a camera and talk. Yeah. And, well. And yeah. I'm sorry. I just I just did it. I just inter- I just interrupted you. So, <laughs> but but that idea, you know, you know, if if you feel that you have an insight that you can share with what someone else is talking about, then by all means, you can wait till they're done talking and say. I know exactly what you're talking about. But you know, my, I've got that, something to say. And yeah, I, yeah. Mine, mine trumps whatever you're going to yeah. say. Because and it's, it's never that. It's always like it's a shared experience yeah. because we're all musicians. Yeah. We've all, and just through time and, and, and history, we've done a lot of the same things. And it's, and it's okay to put a little spin on it of your own as long as you know, it's not going to overshadow. It's, yeah. it's fun. It's that you're still having a conversation with somebody. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we, there was a moment in, in that interview with Aaron, actually, where you mentioned... Um, I'm trying to remember the I'm glad you remember, the drummer. I remember any of it. So there was a drummer that y'all were talking about and you're you were discussing uh you remembering something from watching um uh was it Hal Blaine? Mm. No, 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 uh Buddy Rich. Was it Buddy Dennis Rich? Chambers. Talk, talking yeah. about the drummer yeah. Dennis Chambers. Yeah, yeah you're talking about talking about just this moment before they started playing and how cool that was. Uh, yeah. And I, it's like funny that. because I had just watched that video like a week before. It showed mm-hmm. up in it showed up in the feed. I was like, Oh, this is fun because you know, Dennis, Dennis is a fantastic drummer and he was super young then. And it was this Buddy Rich, um, it was either, I think it was a Buddy Rich Memorial concert. They used to do a bunch of those back in the day and they'd have all the famous drummers play and they had the Buddy Rich big band who was left, who was still alive from that band, whatever. And it's funny because they start the song and, you know, Dennis counts it off and he's in the, the drummers are in the front of the band, of the band. The norm, shit, the no, shit, normally, man. yeah, <laughs> normally they're on the side, you know, between the respects on the other side. And Dennis just turns around and looks at the band and just gives him the smile. And if you know Dennis Chambers, it could be to one of two things. It be it could be like, "Hey, let's have some fun," or two, "Hold on to your seats because this is gonna get fucking wild." And <laughs> yeah. Dennis, when Dennis played, it was fucking just stupid. Yeah. If, if anybody at home is listening and wants to see something crazy, go, go on YouTube and Google the Dennis Chambers uh, Buddy Rich Memorial Concert, and it's my it's musical. But it's also just like, why do I bother playing drums after watching that? Because it's so ridiculously over the top good. Yeah. And Dennis came to Pasic a couple of years ago, and, and he was he was fantastic. He was he was very nice, and he played his ass off still. So yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I was, I, I was just I I dug that moment too because it was Aaron. It was clear he knew exactly the moment you're talking about. Yeah, it was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it cool. shows you that that someone at his level um, is still a fan. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. Aaron, I mean, Aaron Spears, I mean, you know, we can knock, we can knock his bands because you know he plays with like Ariana, Ariana Grande and Usher and stuff like that. But he, Aaron's a fucking he's a killer monster player. Yeah. player. I want he is some of stuff. when you watch him play, it's just like inhuman, you mm-hmm. know. But again, the sweetest cat in in the world, the nicest guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to the, what I saw, I went, I went up to after I watched the interview, I went to just, I just googled him and on found one of one something on youtube of him playing with it was a show where the, all the audience had headphones on as they were listening oh so um so zildjian or vic firth have been doing well they're the same company now because you know progress um uh, they have been doing like these live sets i, I forget what they're called and they're called something or other 
And a lot of folks, they go in and they wear headphones. So they hear like the, the, the perfect mix. They're not hearing the room. They're hearing like the mix through the microphones, which I, I'm just like, I, I, I like to hear the air move. I like to feel the air move in my ears and stuff like that. So, but, uh, yeah, he, he destroyed, he destroyed that set. I mean, it's great in, in a good way. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I thought that was, that was, I'd yeah. never seen that before. <laughs> I was like, what is that about? What is that about? Yeah. Um, well, you're in headphones, so. I, yeah. <laughs> Well, I kind of have he wants to. to hear the he wants to hear the perfect mix, not the room. Oh noise. yes, yeah. yes. Oh, that's just to make sure the signals are still. No, working. no, we're, we're just heating. I'm watching. Yeah, it but doing the interview too. thing, it's just something that I, I got into, and I really, really enjoyed it. And then it was it was kind of fun to, for me, it was kind of fun a fun way to to actually meet a lot of my heroes to be like, oh my god, it's my, my favorite mm -hmm. drummer, and and people were super receptive. Like they'd invite me into their homes, or they'd take time out of their you know, schedule like, Oh, I got, I got an hour between sound check and, and this other thing I got to do yeah. kind of a thing. You know, Dave Lombardo was like that. He was in town for what the fuck was it? Something in November. Um, Slayer was playing something, some weird concert. It was like, it was like comedy rap and like, everything else, some festival in, in Austin in, in November, early November. And Slayer was headlining one of the nights, but his band film, one of his side, one of Dave Lombardo's side project, I think sounds, it was film, sounds familiar, yeah. um, was playing at uh, Emo's, which is on the, which had moved to the east side of town. And so let me tell you, Slayer, they're smart because it's almost impossible to get in touch with anybody there. They make it so difficult to like some bands will say, you know, management company, John Smith management, click here. And you can go that way. Went to the Slayer website to get in touch with Dave. No, I, I can't remember how I got in touch with him. Like I just kept on digging and digging and digging until finally I found somebody online that knew somebody. I said, hey, my name is Eric C. Hughes. I'm doing these interviews for the Percussive Art Society. Would love the chance to talk to Dave. Um, I see he's playing at Emo's. Maybe that would be a good place to talk. And then a couple of days later, somebody emailed me back and said, oh, hey, Eric, how's it going? Yeah, no problem. We can hook it up. Blah, 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 blah. I told him exactly what I was doing um, and this kind of thing. And then showed up at Emo's and uh, there was no place to do it because the um, it was so loud inside. Even yeah. in the backstage, it's so freaking loud. You couldn't do it. Yeah. So we ended up sitting out back in the courtyard and it's just him and me in, in, the, in the dark. I had my little camera lights and stuff yeah. like that. And we just shot the shit about drums yeah. and stuff like that. So it was great to meet him and he was super nice. And, um, you know, like, uh, who up? Like John Bermuda Schwartz, who plays drums for Weird Al. <laughs> they were in town for South by and, uh, or something. I think maybe it's that same festival a couple of years later. And he said, yeah, come to my hotel room. So he was dressed. He was fully dressed. It was fine. Oh, and I walk in, I knock that? on the door and he's like, oh, Eric, come on in. We come in and he's like, listen to this thing. And he pushes play on this computer. And it's this, like, I could tell it's like an isolated drum track. He's like, what song is this? I'm like, uh, I'm standing there with my camera and trying to set myself up. I'm like, uh, man, it sounds like it's old. He's like, yeah, you're right. It's older. He's like, Tangled Up, Tangled Up in Blue by Bob Dylan. He had isolated the... Oh. He has a thing where he would isolate all the drum tracks and put them on his website and say, guess what song this is? Oh, neat. Kind of thing. And then he's like, here's another one. And I'm just like <laughs> crazy yeah, yeah. You know, setting up stuff like that. There is some interesting drums on that track. On that yeah. Track, yeah. It's, right? it's definitely not, not your regular pattern. Yeah. I can't remember who plays on that, on that yeah. record. And then he's like, what time is it? I like, it's 11. He's like, oh shit, I gotta be at the airport at 1130. <laughs> I guess we better go. <laughs> but you know, it's just, you know, and just meeting people like Danny Gottlieb, who's a jazz drummer. His, uh, his manager, uh, didn't want me to interview him. Uh, Lauren Vogel Weiss. She's a, she's a, she's a, uh, former member of, I think she's a former president of, of the percussive art society and she's just a pain in my ass. And, uh, she is, and she's from Texas. So she, that makes it even more difficult, but she was his manager for a minute. And she was like, don't sign that like, a release form. Like we want to interview you. We're going to use your image somewhere. She's like, don't sign that. And he was like, and we were all in his hotel room kind of bickering about it. I'm like, it's just, it's just, it's just for educational purposes. It's not for, we're not going to make money off no, this. Yeah, we're not going to sell it. It's the Percussive Art Society. You used to be president of this fucking company. You know, <laughs> you know how this thing works. No one gets paid for anything. Yeah. And, uh, and she finally left the room. He's like, give me that fucking thing. I'll sign yeah. It. He signed in. 
Two hours we talked. Two hours. Wow. I had to go. I, I got to change the tape. Hold on. I'm a tape. We had we had we had cool. this, but and he was a hero. You know, he's been a hero of mine. And he went to University of Miami. He played Eames drums like I was playing at the same time. So we had a lot of things yeah. that were in common. And he was just a great interview. And he's like, okay, so I was born like from the day he was born up until that moment in the hotel room. That's what he talked about. Yeah. And it was great. He was just like, okay, and then this happened and then this happened. And it was just interesting just to hear his life yeah, story. That's, so anyway, that's, I've rambled on long enough about no, it. No, but, but again, with people's, with, 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 you know, when you make them comfortable and you're able to, to you know, they, they know what the end goal is. Because my, my mind went back to when we talk, talked about this before. I was back at a press only, um, uh, press only backstage, you know, thing with Queensryche back when they were, they, they were, they were still terrible. But, um, and I, I just, I, I had no interest in going, but it was a backstage thing and we got to see some of the co-bands open and whatnot. But this was at the summit. Mm. We're all backstage and they're not in their gear. They're not in their stage stuff. They're in jeans and t-shirts and the press didn't know who anybody was. Yeah. And then the questions were, uh, so what do you like to eat? You know, what's your, <laughs> and, I and it was shit. just, it was, it was all that time that, and again, we, we, we know it from a whole different perspective. Our, our moments before we play or even after we play are not time. It, that's just not moments in time that you want to squander on, you know, what's, what's your, what's your shampoo? What's your, you know, what? What is it, Those you know? questions are meaningless. Yeah, I, I know, completely but completely yeah, meaningless. That, but the the whole thing is, and and, and the the purpose of backstage now is uh, it's it's all monetizing. You know everything, right. but you know backstage it's you pay X amount for this and photographs and this and interviews and this and 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 I don't understand that at all. I do, of course, I understand it. I don't get it, and I won't get it. I don't, you know, the the, the constant money grab at a, at a show where you're dropping just three four hundred dollars on a on a night only to go back there and then well you, you can have this drum head for an extra 500 signed well, by the I, band I, for, know, I know the reason for that we it's so the bands can make money you know, I know I understand yeah. I mean between, I understand. between the t-shirt sales and the VIP packages and whatever they can scrape from the venue I'm not necessarily for it. Condone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, because I know that it's like, it's a lot of money for somebody to spend to say. Yeah, no, yeah, I, and, I mean, I'm saying I understand all that. Yeah. But back in, back in the day, that was the, that was the, 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 the kind of let, you, let your, guard da- your guard down and meet these people one-on-one. Now it's, a, it, it's just another form it's of. assembly line. These, it's exactly, yeah. you're putting them through the cattle, you know, the, 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 the line up and get, oh, you got two minutes. And so so it, it's easy for the band to sign off on that and say yeah yeah that's good yeah we'll just take pictures for x amount per shot and if you want x you know so, so everything is just just tears just price tears all the way up to 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 it now and, and i understand that and especially when bands go through when you that, that valuable time before or after a show and then you get a room full of press people that have got no interest <laughs> Or knowledge, or anything about the band, or the music, or the, right. the scene, or whatever it is, and they come in, and everybody's just in a, it, you know, it becomes like those Chris Farley interviews from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, yeah. You remember that time yeah, right. you did that thing? Yeah, that was great. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's funny you said because I, I, I'm, I'm trying to break, but you know, I become kind of friends with Dax Nielsen mm-hmm. from Cheap Trick, and so um, when they came to town with Poison. Um, I reached out and he's like, yeah, yeah, come on. I'll get you. We'll hook you up. No problem. He's like, come, come, come before and we'll hang out for a little bit. And so, um, at, uh, Cynthia Mitchell Woods, when you're facing the stage on the left hand side down at the bottom, there's a little doorway and you line up there. And so me and Leslie went and, uh, we're standing in line. I think we were, we were, you know, maybe, maybe 20th in line or whatever. And, uh, we're surrounded by poison fans because it's cheap trick and poison, yeah. which is just mind numbing, but it's just the way it goes. And uh, like we talked about this before, Cheap Trick would rather open up, okay, we're done, bye, you know, get out of there, and then pull it, you know, whatever. So, so we're just kind of standing there, just kind of dressed normally, and everybody's wearing poison shirts, and they're surrounding, you know, and then, and finally, that the guy who I've, I've met him a couple of times comes walking down, and he sees me, and he's sort of recognizes it. Eric, I'm like, yep, he's holy. So we get to go inside first, and, uh, but 
uh, it's funny because you say that because I mean we we just went in just to say hi and we knew we knew um, you know we know Dax and stuff like that but the amount of people that were there for the poison VIP experience they had to be fucking that line had to be at least seventy five to hundred people long you know and that's you know at two hundred fifty. Two fifty a person. That's yeah. that that money adds up. Oh yeah, you know, for and a cheesy I, little laminate and maybe like a maybe a t shirt. I don't know, and a picture with the band. Okay, next. Okay, yeah. Chad, come over. Click. Okay, Patrick, come over. Yeah. So it's yeah, yeah it's crazy, but that's kind of the way business is being done these days. Yeah, we, I, um, that, uh, the, yes, with all the money that you that that's taken from the bands now uh, from ticket sales and you know and and the venue has to make so much money and the price of security and all that stuff and. You know, yeah, I definitely understand it. Do I, do I like it? Do I, you know, do I, I mean, I don't want to go backstage anyway. I don't want to talk to anybody. Right. I don't want to talk to, I, I just don't want to, I just don't want to go back there. I don't, you know, I, there's, there's, and there's very few bands that I want to go and see because I want to see, there, I have in my head the idea of a, what a rock and roll show is. And I just don't know any, any bands doing it right now. That Right. So, um. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 the interview thing, that's a, that's a, that's a tricky, that's a tricky, you know, it's, it, it, it's, uh, you don't want to, you definitely don't want to ask the questions that have been, that have been just drilled into these people. You know, you, you want to definitely, you know, sidestep that, but you also want to keep their attention. The person that you're interview, you right. want to, you, you want to keep attention and you want to make sure that there's no, there's no me in it. Right. There's no. Yeah, and I, I don't, th- I don't think you know for stuff like that, like we do for uh, for percussive arts, even for Nam, because Nam is an or Nam was or is, you know, when I worked with them, they, it was an oral history program. I mean, they wanted to know the nuts and bolts, the beginnings and stuff like that. You don't want to sit there and say, so uh, what guitar did you use on the recording? Of blah 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 blah. Who gives a shit? No mm-hmm. one cares. I mean, people care about that, but that's for the guitar magazine. Yes. that's for Modern Drummer. That's for Bass Player Magazine to, to ask that kind of stuff. And, and th- those people that read those magazines want to know about, you know, the gear and, yeah. and, and, and that stuff like that. I'd rather, I, you know, I, I'd like to know, like, what was that session like? You know, you, yeah. you get to work with so-and-so. How was yeah. that? Was it cool? You know, was it fun? Was it, you know, was it weird? You know, that kind of a thing. Can you tell me, you know, tell me about your favorite gig? Who's the favorite person you've ever played with? You know, that yeah. kind of thing. So, yeah, that kind of stuff. I was listening last night to... Uh this really old interview with Steve Jones, I think the, the guitar player from, from uh, Sex Pistols. Mm-hmm. And uh, I found this because I, I was looking at, I don't even know why I was looking for it. I was searching, I was Googling my dad and I found some archive stuff about him on the Rice, on the right. Yeah, I've seen those archive. pictures, man. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. You look also, just like him. <laughs> thank you. Weird. I know. <laughs> but he, he, there was also in the archives, there was a, an interview with him on K-True, on KTRU. Rice's radio station back from 1981, and uh, so I was listening to that, and that was really neat. Then, I, then I was just noticed that the the K True archive was was massive, so I was just did a cursory look, and there was this interview with Steve Jones from 1987, mm. and it was it was it was a good interview actually. I, it wasn't it wasn't bad, but the the interviewer was you know a student, you know, it was not a professional radio person, so he wasn't. But he number one that the mistakes he was making. Number one, he had. A list of obviously had a list of questions that he was reading down instead of instead of letting the conversation a more organic, flow. Yeah, but he also had really really not really kind of awkward interview or like bed bedside manner. Or what do you call it? Where you were you were saying like the mm-hmm, yeah 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 and, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> the way he was doing it, like it, Steve would answer a question. And Steve was great in the interview. He was totally relaxed and you know rolled with it. But he, Steve would answer a question. They go uh huh. You know, <laughs> like it's, it, he wasn't, but it sounded like he was doubting everything that Steve was oh, saying. Like, you that's know, funny. It, it was telling the tone of his voice. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. But, um, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Well, there, well there's also, a, there's also a rhythm which people have lost in phone conversations now. And I think it's because of the lag time or the echo that you get now with the, because, you know, back in our day, kids, we had a cable connecting us to the, but, um, the there's a rhythm there's a there's a a give and take just like in music just like in 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 everything but people have lost this on phones i see people walking and running with with the video chat on i I don't get it your mother doesn't want to see that 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 much of you uh she she does of me but that's that's a whole nother story (laughs) um no but your mother uh, you know, she, 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 she has pictures of you in her house 
and it's it's not in the place that she goes every day you know it's in a cupboard or something but so 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 they've they've lost this rhythm that's because back in the day we spoke on the phone for hours and hours and hours and one line eight kids i mean that sounds like a terrible party uh-huh. but uh it's a uh, you know so everybody had somebody they, they wanted to talk to usually at the same time mm-hmm. so uh but anyway the, the 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 rhythm i'm talking about is that just the, it's it's the one two one two one and if you have that interviewer like you're saying that's that's they they, they, they don't know that they're doing it but really are you being sarcastic are you are you yeah, yeah. you know are you yeah. you know don't ask if you but but also the rhythm of letting them you know no matter how poorly they speak you know just in general you have to be able to read that and give them that time and that space and make sure that they're done and not just be sitting there with your next question locked and loaded to, to shoot it and you know and have it so so there, there, there there's a rhythm and if you don't get that if if you you're you're not making it fun for the interviewee or the people that are listening you your target audience you're not listening make, people are going to they're just going to, they're not going to, not going to pay any attention to it. Nothing's learned. Nothing's uncovered. Nothing's given. Nothing's taken. Nothing. It's just a, it's just noise. Yeah. It's the same people that walk in in front. And, and, and I thought about this too. This it might, may, might not even be connected, but that's, that's, that's my gift is I don't stay connected. Um, the, the amount of, we were talking about live streaming and, and, uh, th- the constant faces in front of TV or, or video cameras or, um, you know, just the, 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 the need for everybody to have their face and their image on everything, everywhere at all times. This is just driving me nuts. It drives me up the wall. I'm, I'm out there trying to exercise, trying to run. I'm phone free. I'm carefree. I'm, you know, trying to just enjoy it. And the tech, and also, this is this is segue time. I'm 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 he's, going, he's, he's, Chad, he's finger he's wagging. He's finger wagging. Yeah. I mean, he's, some, 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 something important is about to happen. Yeah, it's just cut the feed. <laughs> this is terrible. No, the 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 um the music that people are playing on the, now there's they're not even wearing headphones anymore. I mean everybody's wearing headphones on the, tra- the, the but now it's transitioning to these Bluetooth speakers and they're playing music now for everybody to hear and it's awful. Oh yeah, yeah. It's so bad. Yeah. It's getting worse. I said, did you just record like three hours of static and, and put, put a beat behind it? Or you just get feedback from something and tape it and put it? This is awful. I mean, so I think that they're trying to, to just make everybody else run faster is, is my, because <laughs> there's just, there's no way in hell. That's crazy. That the music has got so bad. It was to the point where there was a, there was a, uh, uh, I forget who it was, probably Doobie Brothers or something, but there was some song that I couldn't stand, but because it was something I, uh, I said, oh, you know, I'm going to run behind that guy for a while. It's, just, it's, it's so bad. And it's the, the auto-tuned vocals and the, and it's like, oh my God. No. But that's everybody's, and they're, and they're, they're, they're advertising that, hey, this is what we listen to. <sighs> so. Yeah, there's no need for that. Yeah, no, there's no need for that anywhere. I mean, that's why they made headphones. Yeah. You know, that's why yeah. they made, that's why they made Bluetooth. Uh, earbuds or whatever you know we don't no one we don't all need to hear that yeah but that's just be, i think that's just the way society is kind of becoming it's just like with the talking of the phone in the grocery store or talking about nothing that we all have to hear yeah. <clears throat> i just want to walk by and say hi yeah. how's it going over there yeah good to see you but i don't get i don't want to get close to anybody either um and then the whole like bluetooth thing when we were living downtown down in midtown it was like middle of the night on a Sunday. And all of a sudden we heard this loud fucking like loud music. I thought it was somebody's car. I look out the window. Some guy's dragging a suitcase down, which is lighting up, by the way. And he has like a Bluetooth speaker inside his suitcase. And he's just playing his music in the middle of the night on a suitcase down the middle. I called the cops. I was like, there's a guy at the train station at, uh, you know, uh, the HCC uh, ensemble train station that is blasting music right now. It's, Two in the morning. What the hell? Yeah, we'll send somebody over. Yeah, they never did. But whatever. that's that, that's strange too. Because yeah. the, the, any noise complaint in that area 
they're usually they're faster down there than they are. They're faster for that than they would be for a drug deal or for a shooting or <laughs> that they usually in, in, in that in, you know, well, we, we figured out who to call. You don't call You don't call HPD. You call the constables and the constables will come like that. Yes. Really? But, yeah. yeah. But the HPD, nope, never show up. We have somebody kicking down our door one night, a downstairs, a downstairs door and, and somebody blocked our driveway and they got towed. That's just, you know, the cars, you know, the tow trucks would come down there and look because it says specifically no yeah. parking. It says no parking in, fr in front of our old house three times. And they got towed and they got pissed. And so they started kicking our door. And so I called the cops. I go, someone's trying to kick our door down right now. Never showed up. Never showed up. Whoa. People finally, you know, calmed down and left. Once they figured out that that's not going to get them anywhere. Luckily, it was a steel door. So they weren't going to get through it. And, uh, wow, and then we geez. talked to um, a constable showed up one time for something. And I was talking with him. And he was like, here's my cell phone number. Anything goes wrong, you call me. He's like, I'll be here in a minute. Or someone else will be here. I was like, oh, he's like, yeah, you, we got you covered. I was like, oh, great. Yeah. Never called HPD again for anything. Yeah. So yeah, weird. That's a weird segue. Segue. Yeah. But um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, so the interview thing, it's like, it's like, and for me, when I first, the very first person I ever interviewed was W.S. Holland, who was Johnny Cash's drummer for like 40 years. He was my very, very first oh, wow. interview. Really? I was fucking nervous. I bet. He, he was, a, he's an imposing, I mean, he was, I mean, he's, Big. He's tall like you, you know, and he's tall. And, um, and at first, you know, he, they were playing at the Continental Club. They pull up in this rickety old tour bus and he's like, now what is this thing for? Like, he wasn't quite sure. Yeah. I had re I had gotten a hold of his manager and the manager said, yeah, this sounds like fun. And uh, I think W.S. Holland was thinking that we were going to sell it and make money off it and he wanted to get paid and I was just like, <laughs> That's not we're, not, works. Yeah. we're not doing that. We're just, just, just strictly for educational and historical purposes. This is the organization I work for. And this is what we're doing. He's like, I like this. This is yeah, good. I like yeah, this. Okay, okay. Cool. Yeah. And then we sat down and just started shooting the breeze. And it was, uh, it was fun. Did he play on the Folsom prison record? He played on the, uh, yeah, he's live on, he's on those live cool, records. Yeah, no, yeah. He's crazy on that snare. That's yeah. Stuff. He, so he sets up left-handed, but he plays open-handed. So his right hand is on the hi-hat and then he does his, he does his fills. He, yeah. his story was that, um, he didn't know how to play drums but whenever he, he would live in Memphis and he'd go see Carl Perkins play all the time. And, um, and for whatever reason, he would walk up on stage. <laughs> this is like a pet peeve of mine, but it's well, W.S. We, Holland. So he, yeah, we talked about that. And, and, and so the, a guy would be playing upright bass and he would walk up and just kind of tap on the side of the bass, like tap along with the music. And they were just like, oh, that's funny. This is fun. But he had a really good sense of rhythm. And so Carl called him and said, hey, I'm going to go into the Sun Records and make a recording. I want you to come and play drums. He's like, well, I don't have any drums. He's like, well, can you find some? He's like, sure. He's like, okay, it's next, it's next week. And so he goes and had a neighbor down the street that played, had a set of drums. So he said, can I, can I borrow your drums and learn and for the week and whatever? And so he, he brought them all home kind of like piece by piece and he gets them in his garage and he had no idea, idea <laughs> how to set them up. Yeah. So he just set them up. However, which I guess was he set them up left-handed or, and started playing him right hand. And that's just the way he did it. Went in the studio that week and guess what song they recorded? Blue suede shoes. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. First time recording <sighs> in the studio. First time playing drums, really. That's an Okay, here's how the song goes. Yeah. You know, yeah. One for the money. And, he, and he's like, if he's, and he's like, if you notice, the Carl Perkins version of that song has a mistake in it. The very, very first line. Well, it's a one for the money. Ga, da. Two for the show. Ga, ga. Three. There's a little pause in between. And I forget, I forget what the reason oh. was, but there's. Oh. Is it you know, in the interview? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. he told me. Excellent. And I was like, oh, yeah, because you listen to the Carl Perkins version of that song, and there's a weird little hitch right in the beginning. Because the Everest Presley song is like, the Everest Presley version is one for the money, two for the show. It's right on the beat. Yeah. It's yeah. happening yeah, yeah, at the yeah, yeah. time. But the Carl Perkins version is that little there's a little one for the money, gotta, two for the show. <laughs> this is a weird. And I it think never would have occurred to me that was a mistake. Yeah, he said that. Uh, he said that. Um, either the bass player wasn't ready or something, <laughs> something happened. That's no so offense, cool. Jackson. So there's something yeah. happened where it was this weird little thing like, oh, we're rolling. Yeah. But the take was so good. They said, fuck it. We're going to keep it. Yeah. And that was the hit. That's nuts. Yeah. That's and then really he said cool. he went on tour with, he went on tour with Carl Perkins for a while, but for whatever reason, Carl Perkins like was up here and then immediately just dropped like interest, like after Matchbox and a couple of the songs, like it was just like, 
no one gives a shit. And this is right when yeah. rock and roll is being born, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I he's he like something to piss somebody off. I don't know. I it thought, was just like, maybe people just weren't like, okay, that's cool. What else you got? You know, cause yeah. you know, and Elvis was starting to come out by then and, and, and whatever. And so he said, well, I guess I'll go back to work at the air conditioning store. And he was, you know, working at an air conditioning place. And Johnny Cash said, uh, hey, uh, I'm going out on the road for two weeks. Can you come and play drums? And he asked his boss, his boss was like, yeah, sure. Two weeks, whatever. Consider that your vacation or something like that. So he went on the road for two weeks and he came back and said, I'm going to, I'm going to do this now. And yeah. then 40 years later, you know, he was yeah. still doing it. Nice. He, was, he played with Johnny up until, you know, I mean, as long as from like the late fifties up until seventies or the eighties or something like that. You know, whenever John Johnny Cash, what's he drumming, doing now? He was still playing. He I think he's still, maybe the nineties, maybe. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's really cool. That's yeah. a, I would never have known. I would never, I see, see the things you learn, the things you learn from tuning in. But it's yeah. funny, like, you know, everybody has a story like that. Like, well, I was doing this and I was doing this, or I always wanted to play drum. Like Mike Borden from Faith No More, him and Cliff Burton from uh, Metallica were kids and they went to go see Led Zeppelin and Cliff Burton, they saw Led Zeppelin play and Cliff Burton goes, I want to play drums. Because they were just kids, you know, and he saw he saw John Bonham play and Cliff said, I want to play drums. And Mike Borden was like, oh man, I want to play guitar. Whoop. Yeah. Or, yeah. or, you know, and they, they kind of flipped because then Cliff became a bass player and Mike became the drummer. And he's like, yeah, he's like, seeing Led Zeppelin, though, was life changing for them. A lot of older guys say they saw the Beatles or like um, Liberty DeVito from Billy Joel's band. He's like, yeah, I saw the Beatles and I, I saw my sister screaming. And I was like, well, if she's screaming, that means other girls are screaming. He's like, and I want that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I said the story of, uh, I think his name is Al Cooper, mm -hmm. the guy who played organ with, with Dylan. Yeah. And that he was really a guitar player. The, the story is so cool because he, he was just determined to be on this record, even though he really wasn't invited to be on it. Oh, he, I know this But he story. was friends with the producer, yeah. so he was just kind of there. Yeah. And uh, and he he was trying to get it. There was already a guitar player there, so he was like, crap. So I got, I got to figure out how to do this. So he saw an opportunity at one point when they were recording. I think it was Rolling Stone. I don't, I don't know if that, that was particularly the song. I think it was. I think it is Rolling Stone. Yeah. And... The, the organist, I think, was told, oh, why don't you play piano and or something like that? So the organ was left free. Um, so he just, he just wandered, he just, just completely uninvited, went down and sat at the organ. And you can hear it. They play it on the tape. You, you can hear the producer go, hey, what are you doing out there? <laughs> but he, he just, he let it roll. He said, oh, whatever, you know, we'll just go with it. And, and uh, I think the producer was thinking, I'll just mix them out, you know, when sure. we're done. And, but when they were listening to the playback, Dylan was like, Hey man, turn the organ up. <laughs> and, and, and Al was just totally, you know, being, he was a musician, obviously he wasn't just complete. He was a guitar player. So he was, but he was just using his rudimentary knowledge he had of the instrument to just, but you can hear as he says, when you listen to that, you can hear Cause he didn't really know the chord progression. So you can hear that there was always a hesitation from, from chord to chord. <laughs> a little hunting and yeah, a little, little yeah. bit, a little yeah. bit of hesitation. He was just making sure that yeah, he was, I read that story somewhere. But then yeah. he, he became sought after after that for playing organ, even though it wasn't his, his first <laughs> instrument. It was completely unplanned. Always keep your hands in your organ. There you go. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You never know. You never know when Bob Dylan's going to call and say, I need some hands on an organ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, but, it, you know, and, and again, to, to, to touch on last week's thing, too, I thought as soon as, we, as soon as we were done, you know, we were talking about, you know, musicians croak and, you know, they don't want the thing. The, the 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 person the first and foremost uh uh personality in that i thought would have been sting i i thought you know, just just if if you know but more back when the police was was a thing you know when they were the the top of the top of the charts i thought if you know because there's just there was just no and i'm not i'm not a sting fan i'm a police fan well i think i think this discussion was you know what band shouldn't go on if you can't wish somebody dead Patrick. Okay. Like you do well, well, Okay. Okay. Well, you were talking about poison, so I was, I, I was, I was, I was, I was in a killing mood. So <laughs> nobody even oh, said we, we didn't save, we didn't save it. So we were, so just sorry to interrupt, but Dakota, we saw a cheap trick. They were great. Leslie had a friend there. She let us into the VIP room because it was really fucking hot. Cool down. We had a drink and we go, oh, let's go see poison for one song. And right then, Downpour. We're like, nah, let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> the Sorry. sign. Yeah. yeah. So the Sting. Sign. So the death no. of Sting. Yeah. No, I, no, that's a much, much preferred, uh, uh, 
bad poison stories. <laughs> Good poison stories in this bit. Yeah, I just, I, I, I never understood that band. I never, I, I just, I just remember Kerry King being, I think it was Headbangers Ball or something back when I was a child and in Boston and watching this thing and, and uh, Kerry King sitting on his, so I think he's still at hair and he's sitting on his, on his uh, chair just, yeah, if you have to put makeup on and lipstick and, you know, things and to, to get people to come to your shows, you need to reconsider what you're doing. You, know, you need to think about what you're doing. Oh, he's talking about uh, <laughs> that poison. Yeah. They were, well, they were, because they were all just so disgusted with, with the, the glam. What's funny because for School of Rock, I had to do a master class on, and I, I chose metal, and I talked about how, like, thrash and glam, or hair, I guess thrash and hair metal were happening at the same time. Same time. time. And, uh, you know, I mean, as popular as the hair metal stuff was, I mean, that underground stuff was way more interesting and way more challenging and way more, you know, and I mean, well, they got all the airplay. These guys didn't get any airplay and sure. somehow they still managed to coexist side by side at the yeah. same, at the so same millions of records and yeah. huge, huge and tours states. and everything else. But, yeah. Yeah. And when, when, when they started doing those monsters of rock, uh, this, God, I don't even know where we're going now. Thanks a lot. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when they started doing those big tours with all these, all these mates, cause I remember seeing, seeing, uh, Van Halen and um, oh god, I can't even think of the other bands. I, but there was a three or four headline bands on the same ticket, and uh, this would have been '88. And seeing these bands, you know, shoveled through, you just you just run on, run off, yeah, and do these, you know, these 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 horribly, you know, the the the, the song list is terrible because you only have. X amount. So, so they're getting like 25 minutes or something? 20 minutes? How, how yeah, long the I sets? Mean, I, I, I can't barely remember. I was drinking back then. Ah. Um, but uh, it was uh, just, just again, whatever song you want to hear, you're guaranteed not to hear that one. Right. <laughs> you know, you're going, you're going to hear whatever that song is and they just don't have the time. They've mm -hmm. got, you know, they've got massive. So, so as soon as they started to do that and then, you know, bring on the, again, that's another reason why I don't want to go to these shows because you know, you, 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 back in the day, we, we'd be able to, you know, in, be able to stand there and demand an encore. And, you know, they'd 99% of the time be happy to oblige because you're, you're, you know, they paid the money for the ticket and they want to do the thing. And there's no such thing as going backstage to, to sell your, you know, sell your broken drumsticks and your, guitar picks and all that crap you know this is a this is a meat and potatoes thing you go you pay your money that's the show and mm -hmm. they're going to give you everything they're not, they're not leaving until they're wiped out right and it's it's it, it was a beautiful thing and you know i'm guessing just old-fashioned but just the the those shows at uh, with that energy level and that you know and it's still very very raw now it's not you don't get that you know when you see when you see the amount of gear and you see the hours upon millions of hours and days and months and you put into these sound you know these uh you know the 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 the, the sound technicians the light technicians the stage you know it's just something to behold but you know back in the day i kind of i like those big just big metal cans just burning the crap out of the out of the thing and these guys just giving everything so well and also there's something i mean this sounds weird to say this and i don't know how i i use the word romantic not, not meaning like love yeah. but like you know, like this, or nostalgic for like, oh man, wonder what goes on backstage, you know? And now you know. Yeah. Because, right. <laughs> because, because of the VIP experience or, or whatever yeah. else. Like, yeah, they're all just sitting on their phones yeah. waiting for this thing to get over with, you yeah. know? Although I think, I think the funniest thing I ever heard was uh, somebody wrote a review of an Eagles concert recently, like in the last five years or so, and talking about how miserable the VIP experience was. Just like, Don Henley and I think Glenn, I think Glenn Fry was still alive then and just like hating it, just like standing there, just like, <laughs> like every picture was just like, yeah, Meh, you know? yeah. <laughs> now the fans are like, Hey, I'm yeah. like Don Henley. They're just like, Meh, you know? yeah. Um, and how expensive it's like 500 bucks or something ridiculous yeah. to go see those fools, you know? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But, yeah. I saw them in Rice Stadium uh, when I first came to town, Eagles. And again, it was one of those things of, yeah, I'll go with you. 
Well, and, I mean, uh, it's just something to do. Yeah, I know, know, I know. But you had to, you had to go. Say, you know, it's but being a fan of harmony and being a fan of of you know of music. That was just it. It, it, it was just one of those things that you, you know. I I, um, I never lived that down. Maybe I'll just slip yeah. chat at twenty and see if we can erase, yeah, erase yeah. that from no, the feed. I'm, but uh, I, I'm just I'm, I'm I've never been a fan, uh, an Eagles fan. But the 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 thing that I like to just blanket every 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 time I'm dogging something is I I, I never disrespect what they're what they did. Yeah, and you're always in awe of of yeah. how they. I mean, I hate poison. I can't tell you how bad I think Brett Michaels is as a singer. Uh, the, you know, just, just, I, I could go on. I could go, trust me, I could go on. <laughs> but you, you still have to give them that they found, that you have to give them what they're owed in that they mm-hmm. found their market. Mm-hmm. They hit their mark. Yeah, they had and a then, formula and it worked. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. And then, but then I go back to the, 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 these Monsters of Rock and these big, these co-headlining and now there's three and four bands co-headlining on these, on these tour now. And I see the posters, and I think it's a joke, you know, Motley Crue, Rat, Poison, you know, or whatever. You know, all these guys. Motley Crue, the, Rat, same. Poison. I like that second. Yeah, one. yeah. Rat but the, you, but you know, the, those kind of band in one room, you know, they can be be, a, be be good target practice for lightning or an earthquake. <laughs> but but yeah. you know, just I, I see those posters. I see those those advertisements go. Oh, here comes lunch. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, oh. but again, I, I have to say that I, I admire these guys going out and having a goal and hitting that mark and, you know, just, just following through on what they said they were going to sure, do. Yeah, they, yeah. they really did. Yeah. The Eagles were, I mean, they were a good band. Easy. You know, I mean, they were, can you cut his mic? Yeah. He's, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, they, they yeah. Were, I, I mean, mean, I don't, I don't like any of their stuff. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and yeah. All their yeah. songs are horribly overplayed. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why most people are like, God, yeah. please, why? Even Kenny Jones, <laughs> when he was talking about, can we sound like the Bloody Eagles? You know, talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. the Who record. You know, yeah. it's just sort of like this anathema. They're like, Ugh. but they were. I mean, they were, they were, they were good musicians, and they, they. You know, they, they blended well together and all that stuff. But yeah, no, but the overplayed, like, overplayed is, is the that's totally the, that's the, that's yeah. the t- well, that's, I mean, that's that's that 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 tells you a bunch of things. That tells you one how popular they were, how much people liked them, and also tells you too that a lot of people have really shitty taste in music. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, because <laughs> well, we don't, but yeah, the, the people that can 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 go with a straight face and not throw up and shout "Hotel California" at a real gig, you know, at somebody else's gig, you know, just mm. come on, you know, um, but you know in 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 the in the overplayed stuff too the, you know they can't the, the people can't be blamed for their poor taste in music because these these radio stations back yeah, then right. had the playlist set you yeah. weren't going to get that anywhere else are you going to keep your radio off no mm-hmm. everybody we know loves music mm-hmm. everybody that we that we that we like loves music everybody that we you know that we come across loves music it, it's just that's so so back then there was people like Howard Stern that were doing you know of course he's not disc jockey he's just you know, radio personality but sure. but he wasn't conforming to the time slots that they're giving him with the with the script right quote unquote script yeah. so he's doing his own thing so he goes off and he just takes over and he becomes the biggest thing on radio and I wish they'd never turn a camera on the guy though. Kind of, kind of like like watching a talking tree. But um, speaking of that, we shouldn't do cameras anymore. One of those Lord of the Rings trees. Yeah, but but a wonder. I mean, the mind of that that fella. You know, be able to. He's come to, a long way, though. Yes. Yeah. No, he's definitely. Yeah, because I don't like the. I don't like toilet humor. I don't like. The, you know that the, crazy the, shit he used to do. Yeah. It was just like it. it I, I don't want to laugh at somebody's expense unless it's poison. Um, or sting, but <laughs> <laughs> I know this is this is. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna call in sick for the next few slapper guys. I'm just <laughs> Gordon. Are you listening, Gordon Sumner? Are you listening, <laughs> Brett Michaels? If that is your real name, Brett Michaels. Um, God. But yeah, I mean, and I mean, and 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 then radio, radio has changed so dramatically since from when we when we were kids. You know, yes. I have I have yeah. a I have a certain like soft spot for radio from when I was a kid, because you could, you basically, you could hear a little bit of everything back then. Certain yeah. radio stations would play easy listening or some places would play 
a, a rock channeler. And like the, we used to get the station out of Montreal when the, when the moon was right, that would play literally anything. You'd go from, you know, a Rush song to a Duran Duran song to a Crosby, Stills and Nash song to a Black Sabbath song to whatever song, you know, they yeah. would just mix it up. So you always had an interesting, you weren't like, it wasn't like, oh, this is going to be a, a bunch of, you know, middle-aged 70s singer-songwriter stuff. It was actually a, a wide mix of stuff. So, and and radio and records was kind of all we had growing up. You know, we didn't have MTV when I was a kid and we didn't have, you know, a lot of, you know, different stuff. So radio was always like, okay, now we're out of this range, but we can tune into this station mm -hmm. as we get over here and this and that kind of a thing. But radio has become like lowest common, I mentioned this before, lowest common denominator. It's like, what's going to get the most listeners, Yeah, people sticking on the radio. And it's, you know, since Clear Channel has basically bought everything yeah. or iHeartRadio has bought everything, it's the same old, I'm surprised yeah. we even have DJs still. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, you know, and, and now, and now you mentioned personalities. There's so many like DJ personalities that are just, I can't stand them. They're just like the, the whole morning, like the morning breakfast morning club thing. thing, you know, yeah. that whole thing. Yeah. It's just like, you're, no one cares. Yeah. You don't have an opinion. You're yeah. not, you're I not, guarantee you, I won't you be think open, you're famous. You're yeah. not, I won't be up in time to hear you. I promise. Well, pro so that, yeah. Do what you want. That, you know, like, yeah, let's all wear hoodies on a billboard. You know, what the fuck is that? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Anyway. Now I'm getting, now I'm getting angry. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, it, it's, it, it, it's now. how we were raised. You know, we were listening to it. We had a, we had in, in, uh, uh, God, what was it in, in Dublin? We had, um, BLB, Bray Lo Local Broadcasting, which was just down the, down the, down the bay from where I lived in Kalini. And it was a uh, rock with Bach. And, uh, he's the worst, worst DJ voice. I, actually, his voice wasn't bad. He just, uh, this next one is by Anthrax or Anthrax, and it's uh, <laughs> it's caught in a mosh, oh, mosh, uh, you know. A and we, we'd call in and we'd and a uh, uh, childhood friend of mine, uh, still, still a good friend of mine today, Barry Dunphy, he would call in and he would write these scripts. Barry's hilarious, and he would write these scripts for this guy to read. On, on air, on BLB, on radio. It was our metal hour or metal, whatever it was. And we get to hear all these songs on the radio. But he would read Barry's. And of course, and the, he, he, he wrote these very, very funny uh, requests, you know, and he put everybody's name in there and he'd put, <laughs> everybody, everybody had an alias, but there was, you know, so you knew who he was talking about. We knew who he was talking about. We would just die laughing at not only Barry's genius paragraphs that he would send in, but he also... Uh, the 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 DJ would have so much trouble <laughs> trying <Reading>. to narrate, <laughs> you know, this or you know, just to get this request on. It was just. Now, was this know. a real radio station? or Was it a pirate thing? That's a good question. It may have been a pirate radio station. It was probably pirate because because back then, because when, when we were there same. last, it was like BBC One, BBC Two, BBC Three. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a couple of a couple channels out of Dublin, and yeah, and there were but but it's funny thing was like they would have like two two Dublin channels and you'd go from one to the other and they would be playing the same exact thing. Like they have different commentators, but then like the, the music was the, music the same. same. I'm just like, what the hell is going weird. on here? Yeah. yeah. But, again, uh, Billy Connolly, to, you know, arguably one of the best sound of comedians ever, tells a great story of being in Dublin and he uh, called the taxi. I'm not telling the joke. I'm just the, the radio, the radio topic. But, uh, he gets in the he gets in the taxi and there's wonderful Irish song playing and uh, and Billy's an incredible musician, not only a wonderful stand up but he's 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 a great musician and he started out as a folk singer before he got into comedy. But he uh, he was in the taxi on the way to the show and it's fantastic song and he's diddly dial but diddly dial but it's a little bit a little bit uh, a little bit modern and whatnot. And he said yes, the taxi driver. He said. Uh, he said, is this Planksty or is this one of these bands? And the driver says, I don't know. I don't usually work Friday nights. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so, so there are many, many different ways that that could have gone. That's but, funny. but the, 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 the thing being, yes, you can hear the same song on the different channels. And that's why, that's why we, you're saying soft spot for radio. That's why we lived for radio in those times because you just get to hear the songs and you also get to hear the stuff that you can't get our our um uh, you know the seller in dublin where we'd get our get our records and our tapes and stuff like that they didn't have 
they couldn't get Amazon to overnight you the things. So you're waiting for weeks. Sure. Not 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 as bad as a lot of the places in 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 Europe and you know uh, uh, friends of mine from from all over the world would tell me that that uh, well one friend of mine from Morocco would tell me that he would wait that they they would have to wait years sometimes for these records to sure. arrive and they couldn't you know there, there's just stuff that and, and he's he's the biggest music aficionado I mean just in 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 terms of genres and bands and all that so that's why radio was when you said soft spot i absolutely well, for, yeah for, for back not but, now yeah yeah not when exactly I was a kid, it was radio was was everything you know yeah it's so. funny in houston though we used to complain about radio in the 80s um i think i mean that that, that clear channel thing was starting to happen already by that point things are getting homogenized we you know we just it was there just wasn't any you know we had we had k true and we had kpft but the problem with those two stations where KPFT is still true. Sometimes you get good stuff. Sometimes you turn in and it's just like a, a, a political interviews stuff at when you're 16, 15, you don't care about that kind of crap. <laughs> and then K true, this, the, the, the quintessential K true DJ, the, like they play like five or six songs in a row or 10 songs. And they come in and go, oh, that was, uh, by, uh <laughs> something. And, yeah. <laughs> You're like, calm yeah. down. <sighs> yeah. Every now and then, you'd, there'd be some really cool stuff. But also, you if you didn't live in the inner city, Houston, uh, the K True signal was really weak. So yeah. if you lived more than six miles away from campus, because that's where the transmitter was back in those days, I think somewhere in the center of town, you you mo you were lucky to be able yeah, to that's, get the K True signal at all. Stations. Unless you're on yeah. campus, you don't you don't yeah. really get it. And then but besides that, we had what 93Q. And and one hundred and one KLL and one hundred and one was cool sometimes. It really depended who who was DJing, and yeah. that was kind of cool that actually the DJ did matter back then. Yeah, yeah because they yeah. still had control over what they're playing it to a certain extent anyway. Yeah, Outlaw Dave still going. Yeah, yeah, still you know he's still doing his thing. He's but it wasn't going to be. It still wasn't. It was just going to be classic rock. It wasn't going to be anything. You know, nothing groundbreaking. Nothing right. Yeah, right. And to hear and like you know when I was a kid, like to hear new any kind mm -hmm. of metal on radio was unheard of you yeah. know although my sister said one time she's like oh i heard a new dio song i'm like what she's like well, of course Where? it was like midnight on some yeah, channel yeah, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, after yeah. hours like some guy pulled out oh, here's the new last in line record let's play the song kind of a thing you know that kind of thing i'm just like you know to, to find that stuff it was so hard and then like we'd have to although my dad sold records and taped in his store he was only gonna kind of getting like you know he had a younger gal working and he would say you just order you know, whatever's in the top 40 that you think people are going to want to buy. So even then we were still getting, you could, you, I mean, you could ask, you could ask her to order whatever you wanted, but for what they were selling in the store was still like your top 20 kind of stuff. So yeah. whatever that was. So for us, and when, when we, we used to go out of town uh, to other, to bigger towns that had record stores that had more variety, we would go nuts. We would yeah. like, save our money and run, run the record store and just, you know, dig through those bins to find the latest, whatever you wanted to find. And you found cool stuff there, but. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah. Well, the, the yeah. you know the the, clear, the clear channel and the yeah the the clear channel the I the I got radio all these all these big stations now. A few years back, I did some radio ads, and I went into the to the to these studios to to cut the or you know to the radio to the the offices, and boy, talk about a miserable existence. There's you expect it being radio and it being. You know, expect it to be, you know, kind of uh -huh. a, a big, yeah, fun atmosphere. Like and WKRP? Yeah. Anything. Yeah. And it's, it's not like it's cutthroat. It's, it's bare, it's bare bone. It's the, it's the, the, the marker or the, the, the cop, the Squire copy on the wall, the Squire guitar, the real, the, the $50 guitar with the signature on, you know, on the glass case, just, just not exactly yeah. the opposite of what you think you're going to right is where you know and because they're again talking they're selling airtime and who's listening to the radio now not i exactly so it's yeah 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 yep 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's the other thing i, I missed because because of the we didn't want to listen to the radio all the time back then we had to make tapes to listen yeah. to yeah make that's john yeah, John Mania, and now that's gone now too because we've got playlists <laughs> and Pandora, you know, and things like that. You that, can make that your own playlist if you want to. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. It's just not the same. Sure it it's not the same as making tapes. No, I know. I know. Making tapes was kind of a fun thing. Like you had to think about the order and yeah. And you would it would t- it would just it was a, a, a an endeavor. Like you oh, it you'd, took some time. Took a whole afternoon sometimes. Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. days to to come back to it. It was like a project. I always really enjoyed it because it was like to me it was like you're kind of practicing for you know laying out a, a record like you're changing the running order of something like, yeah. what what if this song was on this album or yeah. you know yeah. that type of making thing. a cool set list or something like that yeah 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 never that can never happen and i didn't like wasting any space in the tape like so if there was like 30 seconds on one side i'd try to figure out something to fill it up with <laughs> like a little bit of talk from an interview disc i had or some silly stuff i remember one time i made a i made an acdc tape of, of a bunch of like obviously acdc song and i did a top 20 Hey, this is Eric C. He yeah. was talking about this. <laughs> cool. And here's our top. Tw- here's our here's our number twenty on our list. This is you know, yeah, whatever whatever the song was. And here's our number one ACDC song. It's Back in Black. Yeah, and then play the song. <laughs> did you <laughs> did you like? Uh, there was a period where I was. If there was a song I liked, I would wait. I would sit by the radio waiting for it to come on, and then I'd pick up my tape recorder and just hold it up. I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that in the car before. Like, you're, cause like I say, we used to go to the bigger towns, they'd have better radio stations. And there was, uh, one, uh, uh, the heck was it? Rock 101 out of Manchester, New Hampshire. And when you get close to Concord, which is the capital city, you could pick it up. And on the weekend they do rock blocks, you know, three songs from each band from like Friday through Friday night through Saturday. And they were driving down on a Friday night. And it was, uh, Ram Band doing uh, Black Betty. I love that song. So I remember like grabbing my little, my little realistic cassette player and hitting record and holding up to the speaker. Nobody talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a thing. I listened to it for hours. Oh, listen to crazy drums and stuff like yeah. that. So ridiculous. I used to do that. I used to record Johnny Carson off the TV sometimes too. Yeah. Or the Smothers Brothers. I used to love that show when I was a kid. That type of thing. Anyway. See, kids, you got it so easy. Yeah. Uh-huh. So easy. You can just type in Smothers Brothers and be unimpressed with what <laughs> and it was what we really enjoyed when we were kids. Yeah, it's, it's it's funny how much we take that for granted now. YouTube has been around for so long, but that to me, when when YouTube first came up, that was the coolest thing about it is that people were taking their archived VHS tapes and sure. things like that and putting them up. And so you have all these now. Now we just take it for granted. It's like everything's there. Yeah. But when that first started happening, I was just it was mind blowing. Go, oh my god! Because you used to just dream about finding some bootleg VHS tape of of like some performance from the late seventies or something, you were just lucky to be able to see a smudgy, <laughs> you know, 30 second clip from it, you know, right. or maybe you go to a friend's house and he has, has a bootleg tape or something. But anyway, but yeah, we take that for granted now and we shouldn't. Anyway, there's just too much. There's too much, too much, too much stuff out there. A lot of information out there. Yeah. yeah well just, you know, do do it like you do everything else, do it in moderation and uh, you should be fine. Yeah. Take two of these, go for a run. <laughs> come back and, and enjoy fun. it but I, I, and, and then now before before we get any further I, I just I absolutely you know as usual we, we're we're very very grateful for for every, everything that everybody's been doing and giving you know yep. doing for yeah. us and yep. we're mm-hmm. we're and, yep. and especially Jeff mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. as, yeah, sorry yeah. Uh-huh. especially especially uh-huh. Jeff uh-huh. Duncan for coming out and just uh-huh. slaying he's he's, he's 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 on another level He's always been another level, but he's up that even, even, even yet again. So, so we're thinking uh, this, and again, this is uh, uh, this is Monday, and you'll be hearing this on Tuesday. Mason, that's the patron. I'm True, on. but uh, we're th- we're v- we're thinking seriously about putting a uh, putting a some kind of rehearsal thing together. Right? We've talked about um, I'm filming it. Yeah, special and uh, yeah, special thing for yeah. You. But yeah. we, but just b- b- before we get into that, I just want to say too that that, uh, you know, as crazy a time as it's been, and as as luna, you know, we are we are pulling, we're we're gonna pull through this. We're gonna it's gonna be bigger, better, stronger. I don't know how, but that's just how, what I believe. Um, but I I I have to say that everybody that that's been with us th- th- on this journey uh, uh, has been so gracious and so generous and we are just we're we we, we talk about this among ourselves non-stop uh so i, I it just it, thank you everybody's been yeah uh, chad obviously doesn't uh feel that way but no we're we're, we're and, and and even even today we've 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 banished leslie and we you know we've we've just everybody's been taking huge 
uh, um, uh, you're g g giving us, you know, you know, huge chunks of their life and their, uh, you know, our attention. I just, uh, and everything that everybody's done, we, we, we're 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 extremely grateful. So we're so we're going to try to do something a little bit different this week. We, we, you know, maybe in the form of a, uh, yeah, I I don't know about I don't know about a live stream. Maybe a, you know a, a live rehearsal or a, or or a recorded you know something something. But we're we're, we're going to put some music together. We're going to put some new stuff together because we're uh, anyway. So I'm I'm uh, I'm just saying that we're we're so we're going to do something a little bit different this week and yeah, you know. And maybe even say, yeah, in in the future and stuff like that, we'll be doing to, trying to do it something a little bit different. Sure. To uh, to just you know spice it up a little bit, and and, and we, we we want to we want to keep entertaining you. We want to we, we want to just raise the bar, uh, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's gonna be good. So. It's gonna be good. Uh, there was a interview with uh, Rick Beato we mentioned on on the show. Right. Uh, recently he did a little little chat thing on on his youtube channel recently with a friend of his and they just said they were talking about the situation you know the ongoing quarantining and all that stuff and the, the they just had a lot of really positive things to say about you know good things are going to come with this you know there's you know there's you know humans always we we tend to rise to challenges like this especially when it's a shared challenge you know so um that's the silver lining. <laughs> there we go. Anyway. Don't okay. forget uh, Sunday's Mother's Day. Yes, it May is. May 10th, That's Mother's right. Day. So call your mom. Call your mom. Yeah. Yeah. But don't hug her. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Chad's just cold. Chad's just cold. <laughs> you know, I mean, unless, unless you're quarantining, then, 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 you know, anyway. Did you say quarantining? Yeah. Quarantining, yeah. That's Jesus a thing. Christ. I know. I know. <laughs> that's a thing? It's a thing. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, that's so, he's, he's using that. He's, he's giving you that word because he knows you love those, 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 those keywords. Those kind of punny, punny yeah. words. They're punny. Yeah. Word, word du jour. Yeah. Quarantining. Yeah. <laughs> I, I spell it T E E M. <laughs> Teeming with. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God. Okay. Anyway. All right. All right. We're done. Thank you. Thank you very yeah, much, y'all. Thanks, thanks for the coffee. Thanks for the house. Of course. The, yeah, anytime. You know. Yes, thank you. You're thank welcome. Thank you, Leslie and Ringo. Glad you guys came over. Me too. He says that on Ringo camera. Ringo slept through the whole thing, so. Yeah. He did. He did. He's just, he's just chilling. He likes being, he likes sitting right here. Like right, literally right there. <laughs> All righty, y'all. He's got dad's attention. Mm-hmm. No, nothing better. Mm-hmm. Ringo. Ringo. Cool. Podcast is over. What do you want to do? The giant boogers here. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> okay. See, see you guys. next week. <laughs> next time. That was the longest ending ever. <laughs>